Hey, welcome back to the PI Academy. I'm Brendan O'Neill. I'm your host here, and I've been a private investigator for 18 years here in the state of Colorado. And today, I want to continue our line of uh, talking about things that go on in prison, life in prison, stuff like that. And today, I want to talk about drugs in prison. And, you know, they're all over the place. Uh, they get in there. Uh, that includes alcohol, and I'll get into that uh, in the second half of this video. I've got some fun stories about that as well. So how do drugs get into prison or jail, you may ask? Well, interestingly enough, uh, one of the main sources of drugs getting into prison are from the guards. Now, I want to be clear, the vast majority of prison guards are good people, doing a tough job. But like every other cross-section of society, there's always those few bad apples. You know, we're all human. Some of us stronger than others, so to speak. But yeah, uh, a few guards is all it takes, but uh, they are one of the primary sources. Now, why would that be? It could be any number of reasons. Uh, often, you've got to understand that prisons are like mini economies. There's barter, there's trade, there's commerce. It's all going on within prisons. And drugs are no exception. That gets traded, sold, whatever. Uh, the currency can be food, it could be stamps, it could be favors, it could be sex, things like that. So often, though, you've got people in prison uh, that are still operating their businesses outside of prison. If you've heard of OGs, Original gangsters, the old guys that are, you know, calling the shots, making decisions. Many of them go to prison, but they're still running their operations. And what has happened, and I've talked to prisoners about this. They say, yeah, that they'll often, they'll try and identify a guard that they think might be persuaded. And there's usually some kind of compensation. Often the guard is told, look, you know, I've got people on the outside. They're going to deliver some product to you. And you're going to get paid for it and, you know, no, no mess, no fuss. What do you say? And, you know, they don't just walk up and have that conversation, but you get the idea. In rare circumstances, because you have a situation where a guard maybe is being threatened. Here's why that's pretty rare is because the guard has no incentive to not rat you out. You've threatened him or his family. Of course, he's not going to be real willing to want to help you. But that's one of the sources. And it, it, when I when I learned that, I can tell you, uh, it, it was a real shocker to me. I did not see that one coming. But there you have it. And again, I want to make it clear, guards do a good job. Most of them are really good people doing a tough job. Uh, I have a lot of sympathy for them. I think they're underpaid. But that's neither here nor there. I mean, bringing drugs in for whatever reason, not okay. So... Other ways that drugs get into jails and prisons uh, are through body cavities. I interviewed a woman one time who told me that she was able to get drugs into the county jail. And what had happened was uh, she knew she was going to get popped. She pulled the lipstick out of her case and put the drugs in there. And then she inserted it into uh, one of her orifices. I'm sure you can figure out which one. I don't want to get into great detail. There might be kids watching. This isn't a, a kid channel, but you never know. And I talked to her. I said, well, but didn't they search you? And she said, well, yeah, but they didn't have a female deputy on that night to do the full body cavity search. And the male deputies are not going to go and search a female. So she got him in that way. And it's... That happens more than you would think. And because their attitude is, look, I can either get busted with the drugs in the car or take my chances. And also by having them in the jail, they could get favors. They could continue to feed their addiction. They can also use it to, to gain favor with other inmates. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on there. It is not, I have heard of guys ingesting balloons and when they go to the bathroom, they pick through their poo and they pull out the balloon. It happens all the time. Again, more than you would think. I mean, this is a whole another cross section of society. It's a, it's like the underbelly. It's the stuff that most people walking around don't think about or, or aren't even aware of. 
but I see it every day uh, in, in my conversations with these folks. So I heard a, I worked, <laughs> I worked kind of a fun case where these guys, they, it was pretty ingenious. They had developed a slingshot that allowed them to shoot a, a line over the fence onto the street they're in next to the jail. And at this particular jail, the rec center area was outside. Uh, and it was, you know, a, a chain link fence up to the ceiling. But obviously, you know, you've seen the chain link fence. They have gaps. So these two guys had <laughs> figured out a way to shoot a line over. And one of them then got on the phone and told his girlfriend to drive to the jail, look for the string and attach a bag of drugs to it. And then they would retrieve it. And it almost worked. What happened was it was like a freak rainstorm, blew in. And as they were trying to pull it in, the tape and the paper got wet. And so the string pulled away and they couldn't uh, um, with, you know, retrieve it over the fence. So I got to give them credit, though. That, that was a pretty, pretty ingenious idea. Now, there was another case. Uh, and I said I would talk about alcohol. And I talked to another gentleman who said that, um, you know, booze, making booze is commonplace in prison. Now, how does that happen? Well, in his case, he was employed in the kitchen of the prison. So they've got access to tools, equipment, water, yeast, which is obviously what you need to make booze. So he actually was uh, in charge of baking bread for the prison. And so he and these other guys, if you've ever worked in a restaurant or been in, in an industrial kitchen, you'll notice that, you know, there's usually big, long stainless steel counters. And underneath there, you've got pots and pans behind sliding doors, huge ones, you know, for large restaurants or hotels. Well, they had the same thing in this prison. And so what they did was they cleared all that out and they, they built a still inside there. The guards had no idea it was going on. They, they were not even aware of it. You know, they, the guys just kept the doors closed all the time, except when they needed to go in and adjust things or sample or do whatever. So these guys built a still in there. I, I still can't believe they did this. And of course, he had access to yeast uh, being in the bakery. So he brought that over. They crushed up fruit juice. And he said the booze wasn't very good. It didn't really. I mean, it's like bath water, basically. He said, but it was high proof and they were selling it within the prison, trading it off uh, in exchange for a variety of currencies. As I said, it could be food, it could be stamps, it could be labor, whatever. And he said, yeah, it, it, it knocked him on his ass. He said it was so high proof. They didn't have the equipment to measure the proof, but you know, when you drink and you get hit pretty hard by something, you know, it's pretty high up there. So these things go on, and it's another aspect that uh, I want to share with people because a lot of people don't know what goes on in prison, and again, I didn't either until I got into this business, and if you're in this business long enough, you'll start to meet these people, talk to them, and you'll be amazed at how they open up, and the stories are fascinating. So I hope you found this interesting, and oh, please like and subscribe. i um, getting a lot more likes, getting uh, some subscribers. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, one last thing I was going to say was this gentleman who made the still, I told him, I said, and he was looking at some serious time because he was a three-time offender. Now, we don't have three strikes and you're out, uh, like in California or some other states, but third time around, uh, you know, they may be looking to hammer you if you don't get a good deal. But I told him, I said, you're brilliant. And this guy was, he was very intelligent. I said, if, if you actually applied your, your abilities and your intellect to honest work, I, I said, you, you're making six figures all day long. So I don't know if it sunk in. Uh, he did get a, an eight-year sentence. But, you know, he'll be okay. He's a big guy. Uh, he was in his first rodeo. Wasn't terribly worried about going to prison. He'd been there before. But uh, a lot of these guys, again, smart folks. Just um, their their intellect is misdirected. I'll just say that. So, all right. Fun little story. Interesting, uh, you know, items about prison and drugs and alcohol in prison. How that works. 
Uh, please, again, like and subscribe. Drop a comment if you know of other stories, or there's something you want me to talk about, or you've experienced this yourself, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to dive into it in a future video. All right. Thanks a lot. I uh, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.